What's up YouTube, Chris here again from ChrisTheFreelancer.com and in this video, let's talk about how to actually become a Shopify theme developer. First of all, thanks for your patience over the last few months. It's been a bit of a busy period with lots of client work and of course the release of my latest Skillshare class, LinkedIn Freelancing, which we'll talk about later in the video. Um, but for now, I wanna get straight into the topic and talk about how to become a Shopify theme developer. So obviously on this channel so far, we've covered quite a bit on Shopify theme development. It's been my focus for the last year and a half after I started specializing in this area and you guys have maybe seen my video on the day in the life, you're curious on how to actually get to the point where you can start freelancing or even work in a job as a Shopify theme developer. Well, there's two parts and of course you're going to need to, the skills to perform the work, but you're also going to need to know how to find work and actually get started getting your first projects. So. Those are the two parts we're gonna be talking about in today's video, starting with skills. Do you have the skills of a front-end web developer? Because essentially a Shopify theme developer is just a front-end web developer who works on the Shopify platform. So if you don't even know what the difference between front-end and back-end is, definitely check out my course, Understanding Web Development, A Beginner's Guide to the Web on Skillshare. If you're starting at that point, you really need to start with the basics of web development. But I'm gonna assume that you at least know the difference between front end and back end for this video. And so front end, as you should know, is HTML, CSS, JavaScript, pretty much everything that is run in your browser. All right, so you've got the back end, which sends the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to the front end, and the front end is what gets put together in your browser. And essentially that is all you have access to in Shopify and it's delivered through the theme. All right, so yes, you're gonna to need to know HTML and CSS and JavaScript depending on the complexity of the task within theme development. You don't have to be you know, a master of all the frameworks because it's best to keep it simple when you're working with Shopify themes and when it comes to JavaScript, but you need to have some skills in front end web development. So this is gonna be much easier for you if you already work as a front end web developer or have learned those skills. The second thing you need to learn um, to kind of bring those front end web development skills over to Skillshare is to learn about Shopify Liquid. Shopify Liquid is the templating language of Shopify themes. It's essentially like a programming language, but like really dumbed down. And all it does is extract data from your store and present it in the theme. So there's no, there's nothing within Shopify Liquid for you to update a database or anything like that. It doesn't provide you any backend operations. It just brings the data from the store and puts it together with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create the front end experience. Shopify Liquid doesn't take that long to master. It's, as I said, very dumbed down language. And if you want to know how to code in Shopify Liquid, I've got a tutorial on this YouTube channel. It's basically the crash course that's gonna get you started with Shopify Liquid. And of course, if you wanna go deeper, Shopify theme programming on my Skillshare channel is kinda the next step after that, okay? Now, the third thing you're gonna need to know in terms of skills is kind of the platform itself. So Shopify, how it actually works, how there's different templates and what objects are available within which templates, how snippets, sections, and layouts work with the templates, all of that kind of theme structure. That's stuff I cover in my Skillshare class, Shopify theme development, how to build and customize your own online store. So again, I've got resources here for all the kind of different things that you need to learn, but to kind of give you a roadmap here, you need to know front-end web development. You need to know how to use Shopify Liquid, which by the way, is not overwhelming. You know, you can just look up the reference. How do I get the title of the product to show on the page? It's quite simple, product.title. Uh, again, tutorial on YouTube if you wanna watch that. And then the third one, which is the Shopify platform itself. You need to know where to look to edit certain things. You need to know what templates to edit in order to edit certain pages, how to create sections, all that kind of stuff. So now that you have those three things, you've got those skills now, 
what you can do is you can start looking for work. Now, how I did it is gonna be a bit unique to me. Not everyone's gonna have this opportunity, but what I did was I took my front end web development skills and I took up a job working for an agency where I pretty much only worked on Shopify e-commerce sites. So all the kind of Shopify specific training and experience I needed was in that first job that I took within this agency. So that was a great learning experience for me. And not only was it a good learning experience, it was something to put on the resume and the portfolio. I was able to tell people that I've been working on these sites that I was working on in the agency. But like I said, I don't expect that everyone is going to have that opportunity. So what I would recommend for most people is Upwork. Upwork.com is the world's biggest freelance marketplace. And the reason why I recommend using Upwork is because number one, that's how I got started with freelance web development. I mean, I, I did get some clients locally when I was based in my home city of Brisbane. But then when I started traveling and wanted to gain clients consistently and remotely, I started to use Upwork. So that's why I would recommend Upwork. The thing with Upwork is as long as you build your profile to a certain standard, so we're talking about a high job success score and a top rated badge and just like lots of five star reviews or four and five star reviews, just good reviews in general, you will start to get invited to jobs and you can update the service you provide to whatever and you'll still get invites. Something that's happened with my profile is I've never done a Shopify specific job on upwork.com but i built up this experience and had five star ratings top rated badge 100 percent job success score and so when i changed my title to shopify i just got invites for shopify jobs i i definitely have those skills but it's not even demonstrated in my work experience on upwork itself and that's actually a hot tip because now upwork have an application process when i started doing upwork ages ago I didn't have to go through any application process, but I've heard now they're making it a little harder to get in. So as a little hack, uh, something that I've heard people doing is putting in a different niche that's underserved in their application, getting approved, and then changing their niche, changing their service once they're inside. So the deal with Upwork is you just wanna build up a good reputation, serving people that need your help, and you can switch your profile to whatever you want later on. So the great thing about freelancing with Upwork is at the same time, you're essentially building an asset in the form of your profile that with all those ratings, you're going to get people approaching you and you're gonna get invitations coming in for you on autopilot without having to send out proposals. So Upwork is what I recommend to most people getting started with online freelancing. It's what I use to get started. And again, you're building an asset that's gonna feed you work in the future. But now I've kind of moved on and how I find work is through professional networking, mainly through LinkedIn and groups and just personal connections that I have. But it did take me a while to build up to that. And so I do still recommend Upwork for beginners. But that being said, if you're a particularly confident person, you're good at sales, you can just start pitching brands straight away. Like now is the time, uh, you know, at the time of recording this video, we are in this global pandemic and stores are being shut down, like physical stores are being shut down and there's lockdowns and all sorts of problems. Now is the time, if you are a store and you aren't on e-commerce, now is the time to do it because it's more important than ever to be selling online because it's not susceptible to all the same lockdown laws as you know a physical retail store. So I know for me in Australia, we've had some lockdowns, we've had some pretty serious lockdowns in Victoria. You know, now could be the time to pitch these companies that have physical stores that can't open on getting set up online. I know a lot of people are flooding to the online space naturally. Shopify has exploded in popularity recently. So this was always gonna happen. E-commerce was always the future, but this whole pandemic thing has sped up the process. So there's plenty of ways in which you can tap into this market demand, this demand to move online and to use the most popular e-commerce platform in the world right now, Shopify. So there is demand for Shopify developers out there, whether you find work through Upwork or you pitch people, find uh, you know brands that haven't gone online yet, 
or network with designers who design for e-commerce sites. There's like so many different ways you can find clients. Um, in terms of Upwork and LinkedIn, I've shared my strategies on my Skillshare channel. So the LinkedIn one is the latest one if you wanna check that out. A link will be in the description. But if you look at my Skillshare channel overall, I've, I've kind of structured it now to be beginner web development, then learning Shopify, and then finding clients through Upwork, LinkedIn. There might be some other topics I do in future on freelancing, but essentially I've kind of built the channel around that. So definitely recommend you check out Skillshare. You can get like two weeks for free using my link below. So if you hate it, you can just leave after 13 days. But I think if you're interested in this stuff, you probably wanna stick around. Been getting good reviews on the courses. So they've been helping a lot of people. And so if you wanna go way deeper than this, you know, five to 10 minute video, you can just kind of go through the Skillshare channel. All right, so forgive the plug there guys, but that's essentially what the channel's there for. It's to help you guys go through that process. If you wanna become a Shopify theme developer, obviously number one, you're going to have to learn those skills. So number one, no front end web development. Number two, no Shopify liquid. Number three, understand the Shopify platform. And then it's all about kind of finding places where you can pitch brands and companies to work on their stores. Again, Upwork.com is my number one recommendation to get started, but there are so many possibilities. You might even wanna use some of the strategies in my LinkedIn class on Skillshare to reach out to brands directly. Maybe you have a really good pitch in mind, but yeah, essentially guys, now is the time to get into this niche. I'm very happy I got into this uh, Shopify theme development niche. I think it's particularly underserved, so definitely, recommend you jump at the opportunity now. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to look through and answer them. Any requests for future videos, obviously help me out and let me know what you wanna see next on the channel. As always guys, thanks for watching. Uh, the links to everything discussed will be in the description of this video and I'll see you on the next one.